All right, Brian Abraham uh, joining us, as we said. Brian, thanks for coming on. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Thanks for having me, guys. Hey, uh, talk about, uh, you know, you were just saying before we came on that, that, that we're wrapping up seasons here. We're getting down to it. Uh, on the player development side, you know, how much sort of last minute checking in, getting eyes on, how much running around do you do here trying to catch up on everybody before it ends? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of conversations, obviously, with the players working on what they're doing uh, for this current season, but also preparing them for the eventual offseason. Um, we, we started to prepare a lot of our players for offseason training, whether that be at home or um, in Fort Myers, which we which we started doing last year, a bit, little bit of a larger contingent with our staff for, for more formalized training. And then obviously conversations with staff as well, whether that be um, where they currently are, their their future, um, you know what they're doing well, what they need to do to continue to improve, because they are obviously a lot of the drivers of, of how our players are improving and how they're working. So um, it's an exciting time, but it's also uh, there's a lot that goes into it between conversations with staff and, and with players. Uh, Brian, uh, we've we've kind of had a bit of uh, a bit of news developing recently with one of your top prospects, Marcelo Meyer. It sounds like is uh, uh, is dealing with a lumbar strain, and so he's had to leave the Wu Sox before he ever got to make his uh, his Triple A debut. Um, can you give a bit more information about where he's at in terms of status and uh, what the outlook is for him going forward with uh, you know with with what could be a season ending injury? Sure, you know the the original feeling from Marcelo what it was it was a you know day-to-day a uh, little bit of a tweak lower back issue felt like he'd be fine um, I think balancing with how he felt and the work that was uh, accompanying that uh, the, the baseball work we just got to a point where he really was plateauing uh, with the improvement and you no know, need to get a little bit more deeper into what was going on and uh, got an MRI and that's where we found out more uh, formally about the lumbar strain so um, Certainly unfortunate for Marcelo, um, but I, I think the good news is we know what the issue is. Uh, we we know why he was unable to get comfortable, whether that be ultimately running the bases, taking more aggressive batting practice, or fielding. Um, and uh, you know he he's in Fort Myers now. Uh, he'll he'll continue to do treatment down there, and uh, we expect a full recovery. Um, it's just going to take a little bit of time now at the end of the season. Uh, so certainly frustrating, I'm sure, for him and, and for us. But at the end of the day. Uh, we're, we're happy we know what the issue is. Uh, we have a great group down in Fort Myers to help take care of him. And I know he's really excited to, to work to get through this and, and be prepared for the offseason into the next year. You know, it'll be the second straight season, right, that he ends the year on the injured list. How concerning is that? Not that he's injury prone per se, but that, you know, that's valuable development time you've lost at the end of each season. Yeah, I think that's that's the reality. It's just loss of time to improve, loss of time to face triple a competition uh you know obviously he was promoted he was well um deserving of a promotion to triple a so you know there's a month and or so left that he is not going to be able to um to play in but i i think at the end of the day we want to take care of our players they need to be healthy they need to be able to um prepare and train um at maximum capacity if their bodies aren't allowing them to do that uh, then it's it's unfair to to force them or, or to want them to play. So uh, at the end of the day, health and the ability to perform at at, at their optimal level is really the key here. So um, you know, I think either way, a really strong year for Marcelo, and we're going to take the positives out of it. Promoted the AAA opportunity to to make a make some noise going into next year, and um, like I said, we expect we're expecting a full recovery. So um, it, it will be. Uh, all in the, the rear view mirror by the time this offseason rolls around and he prepares for next year. I guess we can uh, we can talk about uh, his uh, his compatriots who, uh, you know, the I guess the, the reconfigured big three that's currently in uh, uh, in with the Wu Sox. Um, you do have Roman Anthony there. You do have Kyle Teal there. And now you have Christian Campbell there, uh, who you promoted a week after. Um, can you talk about what the, the performance that you've seen from each of those three players uh, in their first uh, in their in the case of uh, Roman Anthony and Kyle Teal, their first two weeks? Christian Campbell uh, evidently deciding to make up for lost time is just going to hit more extra base hits than everyone. Uh, yeah, him his first week in AAA. Yeah, I think all three together have transitioned incredibly well. Um, they're all mature young men that uh, have routines, are consistent day in and day out. Uh, they work their butts off. Uh, at the field pregame, they understand what their goals are on uh, all sides of the ball and they work toward those goals um, and they train competitively and they push each other. So 
Uh, it's not surprising that they've all transitioned really well in the AAA. Um, you know, I think for Roman and, and Christian, you know, their performance has been incredibly strong uh, on both sides of the ball. Uh, Kyle has struggled a little bit more at the plate, but I also think that position, um, handling a, a new pitching staff, handling big leaguers, uh, having a better understanding of what their, the pitcher's goals are to ha- for them to have success, um, takes, I think, a little bit away from the offensive side, but he's had some really good at-bats. He's, he's barreled the baseball up, and we're pleased with what we've seen. So um, we're, we're, we're certainly sure that that will come. Um, but on the defensive side, I think he's done a really good job in the short amount of time coming into a group that is a veteran group uh, and, and expects a lot. A couple of guys that have been on big league staffs and big league starters. And for, for Kyle to come in there and uh, take it over as the as the lead catcher has been has been good to see. But overall, uh, you know, speaking with the AAA staff, speaking with Trace, uh, they couldn't be happier about the, the work ethic, uh, the consistency day in and day out, whether it's struggles or success. And they're just willingness to want to get better and eventually help us in Boston in the future. You know, when, when you, we've never watched a group like this come up through the ranks, right? The big three. And they've kind of been looped together, even though they're, you know, different positions, different ages, one college guy. I mean, is, it, is it strange for us to keep doing that? Is it unfair to those guys to be lumped in together when obviously, you know, you're not going to wait for all three of them to be ready to promote them to the majors at some point, right? They will be individually assessed, but we keep clumping them together. Yeah, I blame I blame you guys. Uh, now we are we are calling them big three in the <laughs> office as well. Um, but I like to think we have you know big three, four, five, seven in a, in a lot of really good ways. We have a lot of really good players. Um, but I, I think Tom, like you said, like we look at them individually, and they have individual specific goals that they're working on. Roman is different than Kyle. Kyle is different than Christian. Christian is different than Marcelo. So um, as long as their focus is on those goals and they're continuing to challenge themselves and pushing each other, that's ultimately what we want. Uh, the promotion of the three together to Worcester just ended up being uh, the timing of them working out really well. So we felt like it would uh, it, it, it would mean a lot to those guys. I, I, I do think it's important, the teamwork, the camaraderie, the friendship, the companionship. You hear AC talk about the clubhouse this year. Um, when, when guys come together, that's really special. And when guys come together growing up within the Red Sox farm system, within this environment, within this uh, area of the country, I think it's really special as well. So uh, – the fact that those guys embrace that, the fact that those guys embrace wanting to win together in Boston, I think is really special. And we, we'd we never want to take that away from them. But at the same time, they also know that they have individual areas that they need to attack, individual areas that they need to improve upon for them to ultimately uh, do it as they would like to uh, when they do step out, uh, on the field at Fenway. Actually, I'm, I'm, I am interested in that because, you know, they, they, are, they have different developmental needs, but you did make the decision to promote the three of them together and then Campbell one week later. Um, had you looked for precedence in terms of like how to proceed with a group like this? Like I remember Chad Tracy on the day that they that uh, that Roman and that all three of them were promoted to Worcester, and when Teal and Anthony made their debuts there, uh, he cited uh, the Royals of the uh, of the early to mid 2010s as uh, as being uh, a system that had promoted guys together. H- had you looked into that just to see like you know do we? You know, Marcelo had spent a lot more time in Double A, right? You could have made a case to promote him a month and a half before you did. Um, yeah, how, how did you how do you make the decision about that that timing and whether or not to keep them together or not? Yeah, these conversations are obviously happening um, more often than probably people could imagine in terms of timing, in terms of what is best for the player, what is best for the organization. Uh, Trace mentioned that to me as well, and that was an interesting case. We did some a uh, little bit of background. It was really hard to find three players that moved. Um, simultaneously. Uh, so that was certainly, I think, maybe a little bit unique. I know, you know, last year we moved um, Kyle and, and Roman at the same time. I think, you know, there is a piece of this as well, um, going through the same situations, going through the same change, understanding what each other is going through and be able to rely on each other to ask questions, um, feel more comfortable, um, especially in, in minor league baseball. These guys are not only playing baseball, they're transitioning cities to where they live. Um, how they go about their daily business, their personal lives. Um, th- there's a lot that goes into it that, you know, obviously the, the normal fan or most people don't care about is they shouldn't. They care about how they perform on the field. But for us within player development, for us within the Red Sox, um, there is a, a human aspect uh, of this as well, um, where in terms they have to move everything that they have to another city, to another town, depending on whether they're in Worcester or whether they're on the road, um, all those types of things that come into play. So anytime I think we can make it easier, 
um, and maybe move players with other players, uh, I think it works to the benefit of of the group. And um, I think this one was a pretty special one. I you know read a couple articles about and, and saw some of their quotes about how excited they were, and I, I that that means a lot to me as well. The fact that they've come become so close to each other, and I think they would say it's not just those three. It's the group of players that are, whether they're in Worcester or still in Portland, it's a group of players that they're coming up with and that they know, um, and some that are in Boston, that they know they're eventually going to compete with and win with uh, and, and, and fail with too and, and pick each other up when they're down and, and push each other for success.